Hi there, and welcome to another video of Made with Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'll be showing you how to create a simple kind of particle-like explosion with the Array Ops and the Point Material and Point Cloud from Array Ops. So without further ado, let's get started. I'd like you to just pause the video and just make what you see here. Great. So I'll just explain briefly what's going on. We've got the full screen rectangle to render our texture. We're going to get the scene and we're going to render it to a texture. Don't worry, we don't have anything yet. Transform view will allow us to change our viewpoint in the world. Orbit control so we can turn the scene with the mouse. Point material applies a material to points. And point cloud from array allows us to render these points combined with the point material. So I'm just going to move down here a little bit. I'm going to pull this out. And we just need some points right now. So I'm going to grab the random numbers array free op. We're going to get this array output, and we're just going to plug that in here. Great. Now, this material is a bit dark, so I click point material. And I'm going to move it up here, and I'm going to put it on a kind of like slightly brighter blue. There we go. So um, this is now giving me 100 points. Let's put it on 1,000. With the orbit controls, I can click and drag now with the mouse wheel. And I can, uh, with the mouse button and with the mouse wheel, I can zoom in and out. So I'm going to click point material. I'm going to turn off random size. And I'm going to turn on scale by distance. This means that if a point is closer, it becomes bigger. If it's further away, it's smaller. Let's put that on 20 for now. OK, so now we've got a little bit more of a kind of sense of depth. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in between. And I'm going to grab the transform array free up. This now needs a trigger. So I'm going to grab that from here. And now I just want to use this to move the shape around. Let me just reset the orbit controls. There we go. Just zoom out a touch. So now I can use transform array and I can move it. Most importantly, I can rotate it. So I'm just going to grab a timer op. And I want to just move this from left to right. Now I'm going to grab the sign op. And if we look here, I'm going to get this value. Give it a moment. So I'm going to use this to move um, this from the left to the right. Just a simple, really simple animation. So now I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to get the number of values, pull it out, type in number. And now I'm going to plug that in here, so that if I ever change this number, that they both update accordingly. Because when we want to do array math, they have to have the same, the arrays have to be the same length. So let's pull this down. And now I want to do something different. So let's pull this out, visualize this array. So this one, I'm going to get rid of the sign. And we're going to disconnect that timer. And now I'm going to put this on minus 4 to 4. So they're more spread out. There's more space in between. I can zoom out. So just to show you the difference, this is that one. This is this one. And now I'm going to get this timer. I'm going to plug it into Rotate X, and I'm going to plug it into Rotate Y. It's going a bit slow, so I'm going to put it on minus 15. And there you go. So we're now rotating this array on two axes. So now I want to add these results together. So I type in Array Math Array. Perform a math operation on two arrays. And now grab this. I plug it in there. I get this, and I put it in there. And we've now got the basic mode addition. And as you can see, it's turning and we're moving everything um, away. So the points are a little bit small. So I'm going to put it on 45. That's better. Okay. So I've zoomed out a lot with the orbit controls. But if we zoom in a touch, now, we, now it's like we're inside of this kind of like cloud of particles. If you want to know how that is, just click orbit controls, press reset, and it will put you back to your default position. So I'll zoom out a bit with the mouse wheel. Great. So now I want to create this kind of like explosion effect. And this is way simpler than it seems. So I'm going to move over here, grab num values, pull it out, and I'm going to grab a multiply op. So I'm going to multiply this by three because I'm going to use the array op. And the array op doesn't create groups of uh, three points like this array op. It creates single numbers. So don't worry if you don't get that. You just click the array lens later and you'll follow it. So now I put it on 0 to 1. Let's put number of values on 10, just so I can show you what happened there. So if we click this array and we visualize the contents, it starts from 0, and then it goes all the way up to 1, no matter what the length of the array is. 
So now let's put this on, say, 2,000. So these are going from 0 to 1. Let's visualize this because this is what I want to use to uh, create the explosion. This is it. So if you keep on adding to x, y, z, you're just going to get one point flying off in a straight line. So let me just reset the orbit controls again. There we go. So now what I want to do is I want to just disconnect this and I want to plug in an array multiplier. Let me get the array now and plug it back in. So now I'm going to create a timer. Op. I want to create a kind of loop that explodes. So I'm going to grab timer. I'm going to plug that into multiply. And if we reset it, watch what happens. It goes out from the center and it'll keep on going and going and going. And we could turn this up at one point and... As you can see, they now separate due to the distance between them. So I put this on one, I'm going to reset. So I want to create a loop, so that's nice and easy. We use the modulo for this. And as you can see, let's just zoom out a touch of the mouse wheel, and now get this. So now I'm going to put this on 12. And now it's really simple. This is just a value of 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, really spread out. And we're going to multiply the output of this with this. So we copy the array math array, control C, control V. And I'm going to plug this in here. I'm now going to plug this one in there. And then put this back into point cloud from array. And now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply. Okay, so if we multiply everything there by zero, it's going to be at the center. So watch what happens. Give the modulo a minute to kick in. And there we go. We've got like our basic explosion effect. And that really isn't so difficult to do. If we put the modulo now on one, the explosion will happen repeatedly and far quicker. If I would now turn down the timer, we could have it take a longer time to explode and billow out. So these two um, ops here allow you to get that kind of control. But I'm going to put it on 12 because I want them to kind of fly out from the center. Um, and this cluster in the middle, that's there because, of course, some of them are very close to zero. So these points from there aren't going to move. And that's it. That's like the, the basic thing. We've now got the movement down, scale by distance, so we've, we've got some kind of depth, but we can make this look better. And to do that, we're going to use a little bit of post-processing. So we're going to just ignore the array ops for now. We're going to go up here. I want to give ourselves some nice amount of space. So I'm going to disconnect this. I'm going to grab an image compose. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a kind of blur when the particles are close by. So let's zoom in a touch, and I'm going to grab the Depth Texture Focus Op. This requires a Depth Texture. So I go to Render to Texture, plug that in, and now let's take a look. Now you're not seeing anything because the parameter uh, far plane is too big. So let's put this on 13. Okay, so now we're just going to move the center down to say 0 0.2 something, and I'm going to turn the width up. And let's put on 0 0.3. And as you can see, objects that are now closer to the camera are a bright white, and the objects that are further away are darker. And we're going to use this in a moment to control a kind of blur. So I'm going to um, change the um, resolution here, because a blur is very expensive. Um, so I'm going to do use viewport size, I'm going to turn it off, I'm going to put this on 512 by 256. But now it's like a little bit um, crispy. So now we just add a blur up. And we're just going to put it on 2. And now we get this. Great. Let's move over a little bit. So now I'm going to grab a new image compose. And I'm going to just disconnect this for a moment. And I want to just see the original scene. So I grab a draw image. Up, and I'll move that up here. I grab the texture output from render to texture, plug that in, grab this, plug that in there. So now we're back to the original scene. So now we want to blur objects when they're close to the camera. Blur. We're now going to use the, zoom, uh, the, the mask input from blur. Let's put it on 2. Let's grab this from the depth texture focus and plug it in. And then what's going to happen is, and it's a little bit difficult to see, um, but when objects become closer to the camera, they get a little bit blurry. And we could crank this up more 
to um, exaggerate the effect, but two, three is pretty much enough. You don't want to go too far with it or it looks a little bit gimmicky. So the last thing we're missing now is this kind of like sense of fog, this sense of depth that like the things that are further away have a slightly different color than the things that are close by. So I'm going to go here in between and I'm going to type in fog. Render fog as a texture effect using a depth texture. So I'm going to click add. And you know what? I'm going to put this blur in two. Okay, so now this requires a depth texture. So we go here, grab it from render to texture, and we plug it in. So now I'm going to put this color down a little bit like this. Okay, and now what I need to do is I'm going to pull the frustrum down to, say, 15, maybe. And I'm going to pull this fog and down and watch what starts to happen. Things further away um, start to get like a different um, uh, color. And the density I can pull down or I can increase. And as you can see, we've now got this kind of like really nice fog effect. So I want the point start to be a little bit brighter. So I'm just going to get this and I'm going to pull it up on the point material. Great. So I could make the objects seem to be darker the further away they are. I can make it seem to be uh, brighter, and it's a really cool op. You can get really creative with this. I'm just going to leave it like this with a little bit of color. Okay, so with this now, we've already got like this really nice post-processing um, chain. If I click here and I press Shift D, we disable just the fog. What a difference it makes. Let's put it back. And if we disable that in the blur with D, this is the basic image, which is pretty bland if you look at it. I'm pressing D again, enables them. So with a little bit of simple post-processing, you can make a scene start to look really good. And now I'm just going to jump through one or two slightly different tricks and looks just to show you how later on you can hopefully experiment more with this patch and get more of your own looks out of it. So first of all, let's, let's crank that amount of um, points up to 4,000. There we go. So it's nice and busy. And now I'm going to go to Transform View. What would happen if we put this on 4? Just give it a minute to reset. As you can see, we're now kind of like inside of this cloud. And you can decide how many points are on the screen and how far away they go and everything like that with using these parameters here. But as you can see, we get a really different kind of look. Whoops, I used the orbit control there. Let's reset. Ah, okay, so this is why I wasn't seeing it. I was zoomed out with the mouse wheel. So now I press reset on the orbit control, so I'm like at the default point. And as you can see, we get this really, really different kind of look now. We probably don't need that many points when we're that close. As you can see, the post-processing stuff is really coming together, and it still works. It's a really dynamic patch. We could put the transform view now on scale 10, and we get a completely different kind of look. So let's put this back on 1. Just going to zoom out a little bit. And instead of zooming out the whole time with the mouse wheel, I'm thinking, let's just use the transform view up and put this on, say, minus eight. Okay, there's something I forgot to do early in. So you should probably do that later on. There we go. So now I'm more like at the, the position that I'd like to be. Let's put it on minus five. Great. Now I can see the cluster in the middle. And one last thing I want to show you, because you should just go really wild with these ops here and just experiment is, if we put this on divide, what's going to happen? Well, division is the opposite of multiplication. So instead of this explosion happening from, the, uh, from a center point and going outwards, it will start outwards and then it will kind of zoom in. So this was um, a quick tutorial on how to create your own particle explosion, uh, how to use the transform array ops, and some very simple array math operations to get a lot of different looks. I hope this video has been um, educational and informative. I hope you've learned a lot of new things off this. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them under the video below or to post them on the forums. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.